Hi, I'm Beth Carpenter, and I'm a traditional naturopath and medical intuitive here in Austin, Texas. I'm also a pranic healer that has to do with energy medicine, which is what this topic is about, because it has to do with chakras, understanding the chakra system and cords that can attach to us, and how to move past those limitations that happen with us. Um, being live um, is what I'm accustomed to, so please be patient with me during this video. I want to thank Tony and Felicia of the Wellness Expo for wanting us to do these videos to help y'all. So let's go ahead and move on to the topic which is about chakras. And I'm gonna start at the very basic on what an explanation of chakras are. Um, and this is like basic, basic level. Everybody knows that inside our body, we have cells, we have organs, we have muscles, we have tissue, etc. And we are more than a physical body. We are also an energy body or spiritual body. Uh, many people uh, believe and understand that a piece of our soul resides in the human form, which allows the human form to function and be alive. Chakras are the energy organs of the body, just as we have physical organs of the body. Everybody is aware of energy and how it affects them, even if they say they don't. All right. For an example, have you ever gone to eat and all of a sudden the food feels stuck? Okay. That oftentimes by adding um, just marjoram to our solar plexus actually helps to loosen this up so all of a sudden food doesn't get stuck as we're chewing. And I know this seems super, super basic, but it helps us to understand because with every single chakra, it correlates to a particular organ or organs or systems within our body. And so if we can go in and help to clean up, to clear out, to cut cords that are attached into certain parts of the body, whether it's an organ or a chakra, what naturally follows is an improvement in somebody's health. Because what happens is we also become less anxious. And that's really, really super important. And what we're gonna do today is I'm gonna be working with essential oils to tell you how you can help to clean yourself up through the use of essential oils. And in the essential oil world, even though there are essential oils that specifically target certain things, it is very well known that if you only have one essential oil, start with that and then you can progress from there. All righty. So where are we going to begin? I'm gonna also let you know Ah, I grabbed the two wrong things there. Okay, what I'm grabbing is I'm grabbing mugwort and marjoram. And mugwort is actually super important essential oil. And if we were doing this live, I would be passing out some mugwort for y'all to use during this part. You can simply place it on the web or on a pulse point. Know that anything that you put on your body, that's why the purity of products is so important, is it will be absorbed into the bloodstream up to 60%, usually within five minutes. Certain oils have different variables on that. So, but with mugwort, what makes this so special, if it's placed directly on a chakra, and we're gonna go over the locations of those here in a moment, it gently, like cleans out and stretches. It's like dusting and vacuuming the chakra, which is really, really nice. My husband and I will use this on each other's spine at night before bed because we figured if we're supposed to be recharging and rejuvenating while we sleep, why not do a little house cleaning at the same time, all right? 
And so what you would do, and I'm going to put this on my thumb web so you can see how I do it. And I've put a drop of mugwort there and I'm going to actually rub it between the two thumb webs because you might get tired of holding one arm over the other. All right. Or you can also just simply smell from the bottle. And you'll think about what is uncomfortable or what hurts inside your body. Like I said, if I was having problems with digestion, I'd take a little bit and wipe it here on my solar plexus. But if not, let's say you're someplace where you've got a dress on or you don't wanna <laughs> dress slightly to put it on, stick it to where you can smell it. You take long, slow, deep inhalations and then you exhale, thinking about that body part. And if you're like, well, gosh, I don't even know what body part to start with, start at the top of your head, work all the way down to the bottom of your feet. You can also start at the bottom of your feet and work all the way up or do it both ways. And that actually helps a lot. So the reason I'm doing this movement this actually is an action that helps to clean out some chakras, but also the physical aspect of our brain, the amygdala, we have two. It helps to clean out or vacuum out the amygdala. And science has been aware of the amygdalas for a very long time. And they know that one side will store negative thoughts and memories and the other will store positive or negative. So if things in life are starting to get really hectic or crazy or you're feeling accident prone or super irritable, I'd say it's a good time to make sure you clear out the amygdalas. You could also just place a dot of the mugwort back here if you like, okay? And once you do that, let's say four to 10 times, you will automatically start to relax and feel more alive, more joyful. Uh, a little nickname for mugwort is giggle juice, just to let you know. And um, you'll 100% get to witness that at some point if you begin to use it. I was working with a client by phone and she has two little kids and one was still really a baby. She was walking, but I don't even think she was a year. And she wanted her mom's attention. So she started yelling and crying and carrying on. And she's like, oh my God, I don't know what to do. What should I do? And I'm like, honey, you have the mugwort close by. Just open it and let her smell it. And I could hear this baby screaming and carrying on. And as soon as that baby smelled the mugwort, she busted out laughing and fell over on the floor, rolling around laughing like a silly little girl. And then it's done. Everybody's happy again. And so that's what this is about. Because just think about how you move throughout your day. You know, you could be driving down the road or you could be walking down the hall of your office and you can go from being happy to mad or happy to sad or mad to sad or irritated within a heartbeat, a second, all right? That happens because of energy. And I'm pausing because I want you to really, really think about that. When my grandmother was in a nursing home, and uh, she reached the place where she couldn't see, um, she couldn't hear hardly, and she had to be fed, she couldn't hold her hand to hold a utensil. And so it was a very difficult life. She had to be, you know, cleaned and changed and things like that. And so, when there was an accident again and we had to call a nurse in to assist and clean up the nurse who came in was very very angry and she wheeled my grandmother around behind a closed curtain and uh, my grandmother had been very happy <laughs> prior to that moment and within seconds i heard my grandmother say stop that 
get away from me. And the woman finished up. Well, the interesting thing is the nurse came out happy and my grandmother came out angry. And so that was a transfer of emotion from one to the other. And the, I'm sure the nurse was clueless that she had dumped her anger on my grandmother. It's like vomiting it. And you can feel it, whether you're talking to somebody on the phone or in person, and all of a sudden you're like, whoa, that's like too much. That's what I'm talking about with energy, all right? Think about even when you, you go to work. I know everybody's working from home or not working right now, but remember back when you were working and you would come home and the kids would come home or your spouse or partner would come home and everybody becomes edgy and reactionary to one another because everybody's carrying around this glop that they collected through the day plus their own stuff. If you think back to the cartoon, and we'll post a, a little image of it here, is that um, in uh, Charlie Brown, Pigpen, he always had this cloud of dust around him, you know, and that dust represents energy. So that's another way that you can look at it. And so with that said, one of the things I want to talk about is how do we relax some of that energy? How do we flush out some of that negative energy, that glob, those thought forms? And there's a real simple way uh, through um, just taking a nice, salt bath. Um, the only thing I would say is if you're diabetic, use far less salt than what a regular person could use. So if you draw a nice warm bath and you take some salt, you mix a little bit of that mugwort and a little bit of marjoram, and I'm just talking a few drops of each, and mix it into the salt. You can add for a regular person without diabetes, like two cups of salt. If you have diabetes, maybe half a cup, okay, um, with a little bit of Epsom salts and the oils of marjoram and mugwort, they literally will clean out your auric field and the mugwort because it softens and begins to break down those cords that get attached into us. <sighs> we can relax, we can breathe. And the nice thing is marjoram relaxes our muscles too and it's quite fascinating how it works. So those are a really good combination that you can use with that. So I'm gonna back up a minute and I'm gonna go over some chakras for you, all right? Uh, most people are familiar with the seven chakra system and actually what I'll be talking about is 11 chakra system and I'm just going to be giving some basic information. There's so much to learn on all of this, but we must start with the basics and we're going to start with the crown and just to let you know, there's major chakras and there's minor chakras to give you an example of uh, minor chakras, every joint in our body has a minor chakra in it. And even our cells and organs have chakras in it, all right? So if we're starting with our crown, that's the top of our head. <laughs> and um, this obviously, and know that where the chakras are do correlate to the organs that are in that area to help you. So this has to do with the brain, all right, and the pineal as well as the forehead chakra, all right? The forehead chakra allows us to see the big picture in our life, all right? But once we get down between our eyebrows or the ashna, that actually helps us in the sense that this is like a command center, all right? And it also helps, what do we have here? Pituitary. It's also close to the eye, so when we're cleaning this area, it's gonna help with our vision as well, all right? We do have some minor ones in the jaws and in the ears. I'm not gonna go into those. That would take like a full two-day course, you know, to cover all of that. But then we go down into the throat, 
All right, and there are actually a major and a minor there. And in our throat, what do we have here? We have the thyroid, but we're also really close to the thymus. But when we're working with the heart chakra, we actually help to take care of the thymus as well as the heart. So you can see we're getting the organs as we move down. Solar plexus front, solar pla plexus back. Think of the organs here. We have pancreas, liver, and we also have the stomach, all right? The spleen is for filtering blood on the physical level. Also on an energy level, the spleen holds definitions that are beyond what the dictionary says, all right? For example, I had a mom bring her daughter in to me because her daughter, from the time she practically popped out of the womb, was terrified of dogs. And so there was something that occurred in a previous embodiment, whether you believe in reincarnation or not, but something that she had brought with her that had a fear of dogs. So even a dog, even though, okay, four-legged, some of them have fur, some of them don't, they have ears, tail, all of that. For her, her definition of dog was horror, terror, fear. I mean, major traumatic trauma, meltdowns that prevented her from having sleepovers with friends. And the parents of the kids just thought she was making it up, that she was being overly dramatic. But there are things that exist inside of us that we may not be able to explain that does correlate with our chakras and the thought forms that have been held in there and then also fed. You know, like if you mind goes to settle on something that is like doom and gloom and it just worries and worries and thinks and worries and you put all that energy into it, you're going to be a mess before too long, all right? You will not feel centered, balanced, or peaceful whatsoever. And that's why, especially in this instant, with using essential oils, we can help to break through certain things. And then when we're alive in a live lecture, we can play around uh, with a lot more things as well. But this is something you can pull out the essential oils that you have at home and start right now, which is the fun part. All right, so we've done the spleen and we've done, um, I meant spleen and the solar plexus. Let's go down to the navel. And the navel here, what's it covering? intestines, large and small, all right? Even a little bit of the colon and a little bit of the appendix as well. The Ming Men, which is on the back side, and we'll post a picture of the chakra points so that you see that, all right? If it's back here, it's gonna affect our kidneys and our adrenal glands as well, all right? Now we have our sex chakra. What does that correlate to? Our sexual organs. All right, and so if people are having uh, problems in this area, by energetically cleaning up that, this will begin to function better, all right? Now our basic, which is the tailbone in the seven chakra system, is about the muscular system and the skeletal system. It also gives us strength. It gives us energy as well as the Ming Men, which is that back navel as well. So I'm hoping that gives you a little bit of information just to make it a wee bit easier for you, all right? So let's think for a minute. I want you to just think of something that has been a problem for you because one of the oils that I'm gonna mention, and it's a harder to find oil, it is more expensive, it's called Mastic, M-A-S-T-I-C. But it has the ability to like cut that cord and disintegrate it pretty quickly. All right. And I'm using a teensy bottle here. You can put like some salt in here and put the drops of oil on top so the smell stays longer. All right. And you take a few deep breaths. 
All right. Like I said, not many people are going to have mastic in their <laughs> alternative essential oil medicine cabinet. Um, but it is something that you can get. Once again, you can also use the marjoram and the mugwort. Marjoram is going to help relax the area. Mugwort is going to begin to disintegrate that as well. Okay. All right. Um, let me go here too. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is have you ever felt beside yourself? Literally, maybe you've been talking to somebody, but you're looking at them and it's like, I don't think you're in there. I think you must be over here or over here, even if your physical body is here. And a blend of oils that I use called Collect Thyself and Hydrosols actually helps us with getting ourselves back behind our eyes. Remember, the more we are centered and the calmer we are, the more balanced our emotions are, the easier things can flow positively in our life, whether it's health or finances or getting the best job ever, whatever. It happens when we stay calm. Because we all know when we reach that tipping point, we're, we're about to have a meltdown. And we have to be responsible, go, whoops, okay, let me step back, let me take a breather. Is what I'm experiencing inside my head, inside my heart, even something that I need to speak about? or not because that's often what gets us in trouble is when we're reactionary our environment right now is a prime example of reactionary like the viral videos of fighting over toilet paper that's reactionary and that is energy and then that keeps that irritation of energy right there in the grocery store. Okay. So with this, I'm going to show you how, and, and once again, if you don't have this, don't worry about it. You can make a spritzer out of anything, any essential oil with some alcohol and water, and it will offer an improvement to the, what degree, I don't know as the collect thyself, but you spray over your head and our health rays are like sunshine rays. Think of it like a sun and you just comb through very, very slowly. And if you comb through slowly, you can actually feel where there's some tangles. It's quite fascinating. And what happens is we become more focused in what we're doing and more present and we don't feel on edge. And that's really, really critical. Um, I want to make sure I cover everything. So I'm going to look at my notes here for a moment. Uh, let's see. We did that and we talked about that. So that part's good. Um, I often ask questions of the audience because I specifically like to help people because as someone has a question, you're not the only person that will experience that difficulty. Um, and here's something that I thought about is like if you um, go to a family reunion or dinner for the holidays at uh, somebody's house, and you already know that when you get there, there may be some personalities that you have conflict with. And so energetically, you're already trying to power up to handle the personality because you want to be able to move through the event as easily and flawlessly as possible. And if you understand energy and how to clear it, that energy can't stick to you. 
Instead, it just falls away. And maybe you'll have the best conversation or exchange with that person or persons than you ever, ever had. And that, that's really the beauty of it. it. It's never about, oh, I now have to be this person's bestie. It's how can I see something positive within this person, <laughs> you know? How can I be a better person and understanding this? Okay, you might hear some light snoring, and I have um, my office helper is an old Great Dane, and she's napping right now. So to me, that's just little love sounds, so I hope that that helps you as well. Oh, we're doing good on time. So I do hope when we get back to our live shows, um, and I'm doing this lecture, that you'll come to the lecture because I will be applying oils on you and talking about this in much more depth. The other thing I actually want to briefly touch on, because you can do this with any essential oil, because a lot of people want to make sure that they don't waste their oils. And a good thing to do is actually create an inhaler. Um, it has a little stick that goes in the middle. And usually what I do is I put the stick in my hand and just saturate it with whatever essential oil that I'm using. And then I pop the stick in here, pop the bottom on, and then voila. Having inhalers while you're driving on the road, although it's easy driving right now, we don't even have any traffic here in Austin. But once it gets back to its usual pace, smelling inhalers is a good thing. So with that said, I wanna thank you so much uh, for being present for this video. And you're more than welcome to email me any questions that you may have. Uh, they'll probably attach a link, but my um, business email is beth, B-E-T-H, at healthy help for you. Healthy help is spelled out. Four is the number four and you is the letter U.com. Thank you very much. Take care.